Lewis Hamilton has now driven to victory in the last two races in Brazil and Qatar. But why is Lewis and the Mercedes apparently so much faster than Verstappen and the rest of the field? Red Bull had believed that Mercedes was somehow getting around the wing flex regulations. These are the rules that are supposed to stop the wings of the cars flexing at high speed as the fast moving air hits them. The more the wings flex, the less frontal area they have in the air. The flatter they are and so the less drag they create, meaning high speeds along the straights, but the same downforce in the corners, an engineer's dream. The FIA check wing flex by adding weights to the wings and measuring how much they move. However, as always in F1, there are ways around the test to have the wing perform differently on the track than in scrutineering. There have been a couple of clever ways to have the wing change at high speed. First is by moving the entire wing structure. As the drag builds up, you can bend the wing at the base, where it can next to the gearbox, therefore rotating the wing profile and cutting drag. The FAA then adapted the test to cover this so the teams changed their approach. Over the past couple of years the wing elements have been deforming, so bending them in the middle, then using clever carbon structures within the wings to change the profile and cut drag. Now we don't know this for sure but it looks like Mercedes are actually deforming just the main element of the wing. It's this one here and in particular the trailing edge. So imagine if you could get this bit to deform at high load. It would open the gap in the rear wing and cut drag by reducing the frontal area and cutting downforce. Red Bull seem to think this is how they are doing it. It's possible that Mercedes has found a way to only have the underside of the rear wing flex and the part that was out of sight of the rear cameras on the car. However, it must be said that there was actually a new rear wing test trialed in Qatar, although the results were not enforced. And while the outside of the wing Mercedes run looks exactly the same in Qatar and Brazil, Red Bull have said it could have been structurally different. Of course, this could be the case. Carbon wings are made up of different numbers of layers of carbon and they're laid in different directions. This offers different strengths in different areas. This means that while the wing may have looked the same on the outside, it could bend differently with 180 miles an hour of air going over it. But is the Mercedes actually quicker in a straight line? What does the data say? Well, Mark Hughes has gone into great detail on this in a really good article on the race's website. I'll link to it in the description below if you want to check it out. When comparing Hamilton and Verstappen's top speed during qualifying in Brazil, he found the difference to be 7.7 .7 kilometers an hour. During the race when neither was getting a tow, the difference was 5 kilometers an hour. Then in qualifying at Qatar, Hamilton was 3.4 kilometers an hour faster than Verstappen. So while there is a difference, it's getting smaller. So has the Mercedes got faster or has the Red Bull got slower. Mark then goes on to analyse the difference to the next best contender and what he found out was really interesting. In all of the races before and up to Mexico, the Red Bull advantage over the rest of the field, not including Mercedes, was 0.655%. On the other hand, Mercedes' advantage over the rest of the field, not including Red Bull this time, was 0.693%. Very close indeed, hence the season that we've seen. Move on to Brazil and Red Bull's advantage over the rest of the field drops to 0.596%, with Mercedes moving up to an incredible 1.24%. Then in Qatar, Red Bull's advantage drops again to 0.443%, with Mercedes dropping from Brazil's high to 1.006%. That means that on average, the Mercedes has been 0.43% faster over the last two races when compared to the rest of the field and the first 18 races of the year. And so it's fair to say the Mercedes has found some speed and the Red Bull has lost some. So why is the Red Bull slower and where has Mercedes found all of this speed? Well, first up, the longer corners in Brazil and Qatar meant that the front tyres of all cars were put under more load and stress than the rears, especially in Qatar with the four punctures that we saw during the race. To add to this, the Red Bull car tends to be front limited, meaning that it can have a tendency to understeer, the front tyres having comparatively less grip than the rears. 
This is okay on circuits that have lots of hairpins and long acceleration zones as the rear tires need to do more work, but not so good in faster long corners where the front is under a lot of stress. On the other hand, the Mercedes tends to be rear limited, meaning that it has a tendency to oversteer and struggle in acceleration areas as the rears simply don't have enough grip. This is due to the very different rake setups of the Mercedes and the Red Bull, but that's for another video. Having this balance means the Mercedes would naturally have handled better in both Brazil and Qatar. But what about all of the extra straight line speed of the Mercedes? Well, Hamilton did have a new power unit in Brazil, which got swapped out for an older one in Qatar. And maybe that's why we saw the slight advantage drop for Hamilton between the two races. As for whether the rear wing was actually making a difference, unfortunately, we'll likely never know. It could well have been flexing, but that was within the regulations and it passed the test needed. And perhaps the FIA will end up changing the regulations. After all, the essence of the rule is to not have wings flexing too much. They just need to find a better way to test it. So who's now the favourite for the title? Verstappen or Hamilton? Well, the next race in Jeddah, where we've not been before, is a bit of an unknown. And then the final race is at Abu Dhabi, where Verstappen was on pole before winning last year. However, the circuit has been changed quite a lot since the last race there. So again, we just don't know. I honestly cannot call it Hamilton or Verstappen's way. Although it does seem that the momentum is definitely with Hamilton at the moment. It's going to be very close down to the wire and of course I think that's what we all want to see. Thank you very much for watching. I know loads of you watching aren't subscribed to the channel so if that's you please help us get to 700,000 subscribers which keeps us making free content for you guys. Enjoy the rest of the season and please make sure to check out our content after each Formula One race.